On the way home tonight, as you noticed, um, the title of this late night hangout, hello Jeanette, is It's All Unfolding. Hello Crystal. It's All Unfolding. If you watched the late night video I did last night, just like this one, very modest, not, not a lot of flash, not a bunch of pomp and show, none of that. You saw that that title was called an unfolding, and I talked about some of the things that are moving inside of me. And this wasn't a showboating or a show off, it's because I wanted to express it. And it took me two weeks to find it within myself to say I want to express it. Hello, Lynette. And basically, if you were not here, all I expressed was how things are just moving for me, as well as many other people, but speaking for me that I wanted to announce it on a live stream platform. Doesn't matter if anyone saw it, that wasn't the point whatsoever. It's uh, I wanted to express something in a way. And Facebook, social media, was a metaphor for a larger arena, a larger way. And I was riding the current of something bigger to express my shifts that are happening. So that was what took place last night. On the way home tonight, the reason this late night hangout is titled as well, but somewhat differently, it's all unfolding, <clears throat> is on the way home tonight, from my gig, I turned on AM radio to listen to a radio show with some people who know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly the arena they are playing in. Oops. They know exactly the arena they are playing in. They know exactly what they're talking about. They don't jack around. They don't pull any punches. And in the same broadcast, I hear something of a great magnitude that is deliciously positive. I was listening to something that, an event that's happening in the world that is like, that's awesome. Then immediately it turns to the opposite with something that's really, really bad, not good at all. And I was about to say to myself, or declare out loud, oh, that's really horrible. But I stopped myself. I actually stopped myself before the thought came. I just had to have the thought happen so I can go th finish the process of stopping myself to see that I'm unfolding, hence the title of this late night hangout. I caught myself. Instead of going into, oh my God, that's so horrible, I took it upon myself to say, wow, that is so deliciously positive and awesome. So Keith, how can something so bad be deliciously positive and awesome? Well, it's because I no longer saw this as that and that as that. I saw something, something happening. In those two current events, and there was a there was a third something that I saw. It wasn't what I deemed as this is awesome because it was good in nature, and this was bad because it was bad in nature. I saw that there is an unfolding happening. I've been seeing this for many, many years. If you follow me in my work, then you know that I talk about this. Hello, George. Hello, Emily. Hello. Uh, wow, Dorothy. Hello. Lots of people in the room. So I didn't go into the monkey mind, the ooh, ooh, ah, ah, the devil and the angel, because the devil is devilish, we know that. Are we absolutely sure that angel on this show is not the same devil in disguise? And so when these two dynamics, these two current events happen in this radio broadcast I listen to tonight, 
One was of positive nature and one was of negative. And I caught myself before I began to deem or judge that what I thought was happening to be truth. It could be true depending on which way you lean. But it wasn't the truth of what I heard about these two current events. One that was super positive and one that was super negative. None of those were the truth. And in stepping back from the game I was about to engage in. In fact, it was a game that I incited from the very beginning as soon as I heard both of them. I stopped myself from continuing to play in the game and having another round throwing the dice, basically. Because think about it. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to channel right now. So think about it. I didn't want to gamble with that, with that which could be true. I wanted to know the truth. So when I said I was going to take another round at it and throw the dice, what do we always, what do dice represent in the game of life or the gaming world? It represents a gamble. So I decided not to throw the dice again. And in so doing, a very powerful answer came into my consciousness. And it said, it's all beautiful. Even that which you may judge and deem as negative. I'm looking for something. And in that declaration of wanting to get out of the fight, the right, the might, the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, something happened. Something surfaced. We call it the phoenix. We call it the rebirth of the Christ. We call it the Buddhist compassion. We call it the blossoming of the lotus flower. Hence the title of this late night hangout. It's all unfolding. That is a very, very beautiful thing. Well, Keith, I just can't bring myself to understand and or agree that something bad can be beautiful. How is that working for you? No matter what happens in life, whether we like it or not, it is an unfolding process and it is beautiful. Hello, Angie. Let me, let me, uh, hello, Patrick. Let me put it to you this way. Think about a loved one, someone you love absolutely so dearly. Let me give you a second to call that up. Think about someone who left this world that you would have gladly taken their place. That kind of intense love for someone. Who would that be? You don't have to answer it, but just who would that be for you? And they died. How horrible is that? It doesn't get any worse than that. And they were pulled from you. They were taken. Whatever word you choose, they're just not here anymore. They're invisible. That's bad. When we know that to be not good, and it grinds at our heart. So the point I was making about how something not good could be beautiful. Even though that you, you don't like that your loved one left you. You know without a doubt. And you can never argue the point. That their death is not a beautiful thing. Because. If we get out of our own selfishness of losing that loved one. It's no longer a losing. It becomes about a celebration of their life. Because they are being birthed back to God. Birthed back to the divine. Birthed back to the essence where we all come from in the first place. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Angie. So that's how something not good can be beautiful. Hello, Cheryl. Because it's not about us. The current events I heard tonight on the radio program, one was a highly positive nature, the other was a negative, strong nature, negative current event. And what I saw was that the eternal, omnipresent soul that lives in everyone was figuring itself out, balancing itself out, 
learning how to get along with other faces or facets of its oneself. That's why I titled this late night hangout, It's All Unfolding. I have been seeing this for many, many years. Many, many, many years. And also for quite a few years now, I have been seeing it unfold at an exponential rate. Hello, Dagny. At an exponential rate. And guess what? Keith, you're not about to tell me that it's speeding up. That's exactly what I'm telling you. It's speeding up. The unfolding process is speeding up. So what does that mean, Keith? Does that mean anything in particular as to why you're talking about it? Well, I'm not the one here to give it meaning because I would be contradicting myself about what I said about the positive and negative current events that are happening. I would be a hypocrite. So I'm not going to give it a definition or a meaning. All I am saying is that the fire is being turned up. The throttle is being gassed. So Keith, what does that really, really mean? What it really, 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 really means is that whatever is not complete in your life that you have not brought into balance, one, because you don't know how. You've tried, and congrats for your intentions of trying, but you still haven't figured it out or have not tried at all because you've accepted the fact that this is my life, I'm content. If it doesn't get any worse, then I'm living in my heaven. None of those are going to work anymore. Keith, that sounds like you're supporting me in a bad affirmation. I am telling you from the law of physics and the law of spirit, cosmic law, God is getting closer. It's becoming, to the, stepping to the fore with all of us. Hello, Ketty. Send my love to your family. My cousin. So now that the energy is lifting, whatever is kicking you in your pants to the slightest degree is going to graduate to a larger level. So I implore, invite, support that whatever is got your goat, that you unget your goat and clean it up because there can come a day in the future where something can happen in your life because of un an unresolved emotional issue that the monster that rears its ugly head can be so large you will not know how to deal with it or balance it. And on some level, because the universal language is not English, it's vibration and intention. We could be sticking out an energy, <clears throat> a supplication to our parent to say, this is just too tough down here. It's just too tough. You may not know you're intending this, but somewhere in your psyche, in your unconscious mind, in your feeling base, you're sticking this out. The unconditional wishing tree, we call God, unconditional love, says, plucks off of this planet. Again, you might think that I'm implying that as a bad thing, then I would be a hypocrite about everything I said up until this point. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a factual thing. Because earlier when I told you about your deceased grandparent who just died, and I said, don't take that as a bad thing, because if you get out of the selfishness of it, selfishness of it as a bad thing then you see the beauty that they're being birthed back to the body. so the same thing applies here i'm not suggesting that you see you're leaving this planet as oh my god i'm going to die i'm going to die nobody wants to leave their pla the planet before it's quote time right we want to be here for a while and if we have all the confidence in the world or in the universe that when i leave here that i'm just going back to the place i came from then it softens the blow about your mortality right 
So what I'm saying about this model that I offered is, whatever your fears are, be it jealousy, be it control, anger, insecurities of all sorts, depression or anxiety, depression is worrying about the past, anxiety is worrying about the future. If you don't solve any of these emotional issues, hence the title of this late night hangout called It's All Unfolding. And as I said a little bit ago, spirit is stepping forward in everyone, not just laying, so to speak, dormant. It's beginning to move, and it has been for a long time. And the gasoline and the fire and the accelerator is being expanded. The energy is beginning to move. 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 And it's going to start doing this on a graduated ex exponential scale. I strongly encourage you to walk into the problem because you can never change the problem or the emotional imbalance by stuffing it down and stuffing it down and stuffing it down and stuffing it down because this is like a soda bottle the soda bottle is okay because it's not moving and your stuff is that you are the soda or your emotional baggage is the soda when you shake a soda bottle and you release the cap what happens your metaphysical metaphorical and metaphysical soda bottle soda bottle is being shaken because of what's happening and one day it can get so monumental that if you bust your cap watch what will come out of you please consider what I'm offering to you I've been doing this a very very long time and because I love you I, I wish for you for a day to never happen that you go, oh my gosh, I wish I didn't just all take what someone offered to me and just heard it like this broadcast and I go, eh, sounds interesting, sounds possible. Let me just wake up tomorrow and continue my ongoing week and my ongoing life and not heed what has been brought to me quite a few times through different sources. Maybe the idea is if it's brought to you quite a few times from different sources, the universe is saying, this is coming down the pike. Because it's all unfolding. It's all unfolding. Here's the good news. There is no bad news. <laughs> Keith, again, it's tough for me to Take that in, at least to the level you are trying to convey to me. If you just allow yourself for a moment, a single solitary, holy instant moment, to entertain the idea, the heart space, that there's nothing wrong anywhere ever, never has been, there isn't now, nor there ever will be. I understand that we use words to convey and to describe events in our life. Well, you know, this is not a good thing, and this is a great thing. I understand that. Putting that aside, when we're talking about your life, your existence, which is your soul, which is who you are, as to why you are in this room participating with me. You as the meat suit cannot be in this room if your soul did not agree or create to be in this room at this said perfect time. It is absolutely impossible. So when we look out into the world and into our own selves, and we see that which could be deemed as bad or negative. How is that working for you? And if it is working for you, that you're resolving some conflict, inner conflict, and you help resolving some of the conflict exterior to you, by all means, keep doing it. 
Because if you're changing your experience in the temporal, some part of you inside has made the shift. You may not be aware of it, but that's okay. You don't have to be aware of it because the validation, what's happening in your life is validation of where you are. That's it. That's it. This is you, the causal, the cause, because, <laughs> be, just be in a state of being. I will be. And in your being, whether your being is still, be still and know that I am God, in your being, if you are still, then the temporal outside world will reflect, reflect to you your own stillness and peace. End of story. There is no other spiritual work to do. No matter your path of spirituality, the way back to spirit is to take control of your life, one, by getting out of control. That is when you are in most control. And when you begin to plant yourself as the stillness, and your conscious is steadfast in that stillness, you have more power in doing absolutely nothing because of your stillness and your conviction in the being still than if you would if you had some conviction in doing a lot because I have to do more because if we had the confidence and the connection and the consciousness to the divine parent, we go, Whew. it's all unfolding. And you love it for what it is, the beautiful dance that the soul is carrying out, trying to figure itself, trying to right itself, trying to balance itself. Well, Keith, that still sounds like you living in contradiction and duality. No, I'm using these words as a way to describe so we can get to a place of understanding. Now that we are at the place of understanding by the words I used to describe, the soul needs to balance itself. The soul is trying to figure out itself. The soul doesn't need to balance itself. The soul doesn't need to figure out anything. The soul is balanced. So when we now see ourselves as the part of the balance, or allow ourselves to at least do what we can, when we can, as often as we can, however we can and whoever with. Shh. Listen. Take a breath. If someone is around you and you feel awkward, have them take a breath with you. Take a breath. Connect to your divine parent. In your breath, use your intention to say, Divine Parent, talk to me. Divine Parent, I want to hear you. Divine Parent, consume me. And when you do that, if you did it, you already feel it. There is no disconnect and you feel it. You do not feel the disconnect. In fact, you begin to see the positive and the negative as a dance of beauty. That is called absolute surrendering to God. When you're not judging this as right or wrong, light or dark, good or bad, holy or blasphemous. Because if God is the creator and the sustainer of, of all of it, like I said earlier, there's nothing that has ever been wrong. There's nothing wrong now. And there's nothing that it could ever be wrong ever, ever, ever. And forevermore. It's impossible. Who is in control? We? Or source? Creator? God? Spirit? Whatever word you want to call it. So when we get out of this being good and this being bad, out of the world of duality, we're not seeking duality, are we? I'm not. We're trying to seek wholeness. We don't want to fill the hole that we feel inside. We want to feel the hole. <laughs> so we can have fulfillment. My brother Brian D. Harden says, You speak the truth. Life is a great is a series of growth lessons. Every capital crisis is just an opportunity for us to learn and grow. Everything is a lesson. Love. What we give, we get. Love and thank all. Even the bad, it is just your teacher. Brian Harden, I love you. He always says we either live in yum 
or yuck. So what I'm offering through this presentation late night, having a nightcap, <laughs> I love tequila late night. It winds me down. It gets me into my humanness. So the purpose of this broadcast tonight was I'm beginning to see an unfolding process, though I've always seen it. But it's happening to an exponential level. And as I said earlier, I support you. Hello, Alan Turner, my dear friend. I miss you. I support you and really look at the dynamic of what the energy that's moving within you. In fact, don't just look at it. Admire it. Appreciate it. Massage it. Take it home and name it George. <laughs> Arjun Sazi, my friend from India when I was there. You rock star you. It's about loving yourself. When you truly begin to love yourself, truly, to whatever level, as long as you are dabbling in the arena of wanting to love yourself and really starting to feel that you no longer give a shit about what's happening in the outside world, except that you love it for reflecting to you your own spiritual endowment. What I meant by not giving a shit, I don't mean with a flippant attitude. I use those words on purpose and consciously because it's they're, they're powerful. It creates an, an attention. It's an attention getter. It's a clickbait because I really don't give a shit about the stupidity, the folly that's happening out there. I don't care about it. In fact, I'm so unplugging from it. It's not an escaping from reality. That is not where I and or you or any of us truly dwell. I'm releasing my grip from it and I'm falling further into the unfolding process. In fact, I'm out of space right now in my life. I'm, I'm like, like Brian said, everything is a lesson we learn, we grow, love yourself, all this. So I'm going to love myself and give myself a pat on the back, which I support all of you in doing when you achieve a milestone. My milestone is I'm not only into the unfolding process, process. I've been doing that for the last few years. I am now in the unfolding progress because my consciousness and my heart has shifted from thinking about this is good, bad, light, dark, holy, blasphemous, right, wrong, positive, negative. It does not work unless you want to continue to be a master playing in the arena, in duality, in the game of life. I'm done with it. Hello, Leanne. I am absolutely, unequivocally done with it. I have compassion for the world. Compassion in my heart and the passion and sincerity is not only a, a spark, it's not a fire, it's not a bonfire, it's a conflagration. And living in that place Beyond the current event I heard tonight that was of a, a huge positive nature and beyond the other current event within five minutes that was of a huge negative nature, I'm no longer living in that duality split. I'm not. So here's the good news. There's nothing wrong. Now let's get back to earth and speak about things from a human perspective. It's equally as good things are happening in your life and they graduate and they graduate and they graduate. That is freaking awesome. As good as the bad things in your life are going to graduate and graduate and graduate and they both move up together. The devil, the angel, and either one of them is not true. The dynamic and the dance is true. But the reality of what they mean has no validity whatsoever and it's trash. Throw it in the, the garbage can like yesterday's newspaper. It has no weight. It's a castle in the air and it will fall and dissipate. 
I understand again, like I said before, the dynamic of left, right, good, bad, up, down, duality. It's a way of describing to our mind and to our heart by contrast, through contrast, via contrast, how we can govern ourselves and navigate ourselves to become masters of the complexity of the universe and God and spirit and the matrix of the divinity that lives everywhere. And you can spin your own reality as you wish when we when you get out of that noise when we get out of the noise and out of being in control we are in control because we are still and we're matching our divine parents disposition be still so now that I'm still we unify now that you're still you unify now that we are still the world unifies versus the bickering and the yammering on things are unfolding things are shifting my consciousness is shifting and i want to say in front of all you people i declare all you people i declare i am grateful i am humble something is changing and I don't honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna humble myself and make myself vulnerable. Keep okay, practice what you preach. Totally get it. Some part of me does not know what to do with it. Because it's new. It's another rung on the ladder for me. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know. What part I should do, what part I should not. Well, Keith, use your own teachings. Be still and know I have, and I do. But this has such an amazing energy to it. It's almost moving me into it. And so I'm not resisting the movement of where it wants to pull me. Well, think about it. You get on a surfboard for the first time. Some part of you has to participate to stay balanced and atop so you don't go under physically on the water and or emotionally, metaphorically in sink, right? So I'm, I'm not afraid about the sinking aspect, aspect of it. I'm not going to sink and I already know that. I just try to do what I can to stay in a state of equilibrium. I will find my way. You can bet on that. So again, y'all, late night hangout, I went through this dialogue, this presentation about, if you just got here, about what I heard on the radio show tonight, about an amazing, beautiful, positive event, and by what I was about to term and deem and judge as an amazing, horrible event until I caught myself and realized, this is just an unfoldment process of spirit, and they all will win. And so the greatest ploy for anyone is to jump on board with the consciousness, the disposition of being just like the all, just like, just like your divine parent. If you want to be a fireman, you act like a fireman. If you want to be a chef, you go to culinary school. If you want to be a spiritual aspirant to make love, passionate, divine, cosmic, intimate, sincere love with your divine parent so much so that you become amalgamated and unified then we take on the properties of being just like it so much so that you create an opening dear lord have mercy when you intend to fall into the kingdom into the gate so much so you crave it like your next breath. <sighs> if you would, depending on your belief, or actually rather, no matter your belief, and I do suggest you of removing yourself from belief. Keith, what are you saying? I'm saying get out of believing anything. Like Yoda says, you do or do not. There is no try. Whatever your faith is, don't walk into it or stay in blind faith and don't believe in it. 
Let me push you into it all the way. Move into it. Move into it with every fiber of your being. With all of your favor, all fervor, all of your love. Move into it. If it's Christianity, become so close to Christ. That you become like this. You don't need the book to do it. You don't need the Bible to do it. You know enough of that to follow the dance or to participate by allowing yourself to feel his energy. The book is irrelevant, put it on the shelf. What is more important in a book than beyond the 15 or 1200 pages and the ink and the words in it and the paper it's made of is that right there. So tonight when you lay down, be it Buddhist, Muslim, Islamic, and please do not associate Islamic and Muslim with radicals because we don't want to talk about the other radicals in every faith. It wouldn't be fair to leave all those out if we're going to isolate one. That's negative. Let's put that aside. No matter your doctrine, if you are following a deity, even in your own way, that you know is a being of unconditional love, don't just believe in it. That's only half of the dance. It's only half of the dance. I am not, personally, I am not satisfied with paltry scraps of information. I'm not. I yearn it. There's a burning yearning in me. I connect to Jesus. I connect to Buddha. I connect to Krishna. I connect to Sathya Sai Baba. I don't have labels for that which is beyond labels. I don't read a book for that which is beyond the book. It's all located here in the Stargate. So what I was going to ask you a minute ago was to fall in tonight. When you go to bed, give yourself a birthday gift, even if it's your birthday not. Birth day gift. Today could be a birth for you, the birth of a Christ, or at least to a deeper level. The birth of the Buddha to a deeper level, whatever it is. Tonight, maybe just, well, of course, meditate if that's what you do, and or pray. Breathe like you want something. Breathe like you are something. Because you are. And breathe yourself into that. Make yourself a fire. Because the breath that you take belongs to God. It belongs to no one else. And the fact that it exists everywhere for us to draw in is called divine grace. <laughs> so when you take that breath in, realize, oh my God, this is palpable. And literally, it is God. Oh my God. God breathed life into man. And every breath you take throughout your life, conscious or not, you're taking in spirit. But when we do that consciously, we are actually recognizing spirit and the grace becomes greater and you begin to feel it in your body and your mind begins to get clear and your heart begins to expand. You are walking into the kingdom, to the gate, the cosmic womb. We came here through the cosmic womb, your mother's womb, and we go back the same way through the cosmic womb. So tonight when you're preparing for sleep, I mean it, take over me, consume me, engulf me. Do that for 10 minutes and watch where you end up. It's all an unfolding. It's all an unfolding process. And the world outside is reflecting that to us now. I know it's very easy to go outside of ourselves and to blame the world. You son of a bitch. Or you son of a bitches. That's what humans do. I do it. But I'm getting better at the process like many of us, many of you. Those bad people out there are not bad people. They are part of the validation of what we believe about ourselves individually as well as collectively. Well, Keith, I don't believe in what you're saying. It does not matter. The truth does not anyone is, need anyone's permission to exist. 
But keep what makes you think that you have a handle on the truth. It's physics. It's cosmic law. Science will tell you what you focus on becomes a particle. You turn away from what you were focused on, it becomes a wave, which means infinite potential. And as long as we deem what we think is happening out there as terrorist racism and the bad people and this and that and this and that, that wave begins to solidify into a particle. And every thought you think, you're now creating particles. And we have eight plus billion people in the world creating particles. What is your focus and what are the particles are you creating? Psychologists will tell you about the over the over observation syndrome or theory. And people hyper focus hyper focus on their child and doctors in clinical situations saying this is what's going on with this child, this is what's going on with this child, this is going on with this child. Guess what? This is going on with this child. Dr. Deepak Chopra said, being an oncologist, a spiritualist to the hilt, and a doctor, an oncologist. In his life, he, dedicate, he dedicates himself to bridging science with spirituality, to prove that they're both right. Because if science is right, science that is accurate, and spirituality that is accurate is right, when they marry, there's a third something that is born. When you take a mother and father and you put them together, a third something is born, we call it a child. Science would be the father, spirituality would be the mother. Maybe in the future we'll call it spirituality. <laughs> right? So Deepak Chopra did a test of people who had blood work done for a biopsy. 12 people and he sat them all in a circle and he had a bowl, goldfish bowl full of cards with the diagnosis of everybody who was there to find out the results of their test. I'm liking this to blaming the outside world for your problems but also blaming the outside world for your praises. That's blame as well. Oh my God, this person makes me feel so wonderful. You're blaming them for your happiness. So Deepak Chop was in a circle of 12 people. He reaches into the goldfish bowl. So they're all there for their diagnosis about cancer. John Doe. John Doe raises up his hand. He says, you have cancer. He said, in that moment, you could see that person's will to live begin to fade from them immediately. You could see it in their eyes. Of course, you could see the anticipation and their nervousness. But once it was said, you see them go. <sighs> he said, you immediately begin to see their life leave right before your eyes. Reaches in the goldfish bowl and says, Jane Doe. Everything's okay. You can see them swell and begin to become more and more healthy right in the moment. When we look into that outside world that this whole presentation tonight has been about, what you are seeing is what you think you are seeing. Is that a true statement or not? And there's no way out of that conundrum. Because if you can find an answer out of that conundrum in a way, I am truly open to your explanation. What you, whoever you are, collectively, what we think we are seeing happening in the outside world to that individual is truth or true. Because someone in the listening audience now or in the future may say, this is what I see happening. And because they see that as happening, well, is it not true for them? They would say, well, absolutely it is. And somebody else would say, well, I don't see that happening. So guess what? It's not true for them. It's all unfolding, y'all. It's unfolding. And it's out of our control. It's out of our control. If God is on the present and in control and sustains everything, our best ploy is to step back. Completely, absolutely step back. Love it, as Brian says. Love your lessons. Love yourself for the lessons. Hello, Charles. Hello, Jack. Hello, Lori. Love yourself for your shortcomings. 
Because in so doing, you move out of the duality of no longer calling this a shortcoming or a goal I've reached because it's all a beautiful journey. And that journey begins when you drop from here, the ooh ooh ah ah, monkey mind, the devil on the shoulder, the right and the wrong with the world, the light, the dark, the holy, the blasphemous, the good or the bad, that's all noise. Monkey minded, incessant, ongoing, rambling noise. You can never hear God that way. If you raise yourself, ironically, <laughs> if you raise yourself ironically from your mind down to your heart sounds like that's a drop but it's actually not it's an ascension so when you ascend from up here to here and you live in that space just project yourself there now you can see it drop your, your consciousness in your heart space and it's kind of strange because you can actually look through your chest as if you're experiencing life from there. You stay in that place as often as you can. And your response to the world will come from that place, that space. Then the outside world will begin to reflect to you that space, that heaven on earth. And what before you thought was negative and or positive, gloriously turns into something so beyond beautiful. The explosion of light that will happen in you will expand in such a way that all you see is a glorious, beautiful unfolding. I love you. If you have anything you want to ask, anything you want to bring forth, I'd be more than happy to talk with you and answer your question or support you in something that happened that was here we go back into descriptions so let's get back to the human level this is a, what I described earlier tonight was about consciousness and a word word place to help you shift into a space now we're going to just chit chat I would love to know something that happened beautiful to you today so let me see who's still here I want to refresh this page because I love acknowledging people love it you are my life, not a part of my life. You are my life. Brian's still here. Fran, Dorothy, Sue, Emily. By the way there, Mr. Brian uh, Harden. Sir, I really, really enjoyed our conversation the other night. Dorothy, good night, beautiful. I so enjoyed it the other night. I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> that you, can, you and I can do this on a rotation basis. Maybe not every week, but maybe every other, other week, or maybe at least once a month. And we can build up our fire following because you and, I, you and I, sir, we dialogue, and it's like we're Siamese twins that are split. <laughs> I love it. And we know how to dance. I can tell when you're resolving your sentence, you can tell, and we're like into each other. It's so easy. It reminds me of hanging out with, you remind me of my mentor many, many years ago. And he's been gone for so long, and I long for him. And brother, I want to say thank you, and I appreciate you, because you remind me of that space of having such a brotherhood with another knucklehead like me, <laughs> who likes to get in the trenches, right? I really dig that space with you, man. It's, it's kind of like having a beer. So the next time you and I need to do, next time we do this, we need to have a beer and keep it casual. Brian says, angels, aliens, and celebrity. So that's our next broadcast. Love it. Emily says, it's nice to talk to someone else who also consider that we are all, we are all, we are out, we are all co-create, we are all co-creating and creating with our thoughts and so forth. It's nice to hear you say that like I do in my videos. Answer. Emily, let me go. Let me do a, give me one moment, dear. I'm doing a, a link on you. I want to see who you are. We are friends. Let's chat again soon. Send me a message tomorrow if you think about it. If I think about it, I'll send one to you. Um, I don't know if you do a radio show, but maybe 
If we have the same uh, connection, maybe I can get you on mine. So love and light. Thank you, dear. I really appreciate it. Brian says, I'll play drums if you play the bass. <laughs> right? Brian says, you're also my mentor. Bro, thank you. I appreciate your support in me. Uh, I love what you do, bro. So anyway, I'm going to be here and wind down with a, another nightcap and finish this cigarette. Like I said in previous broadcast, sometimes I need to smoke a cigarette because really, if you did, if, uh, if you were here for a while, you've noticed that some, and I have no notes tonight. And there are many people who can do this. This is not a bragging point for Keith. I'm just telling you what happens to me when I do these presentations. Sometimes when I start the dance, I have to initiate the dance. I have to start the movement. That movement we talked about for this whole presentation. But once the movement starts happening, it's hard for me to say, do this or do that. I can't control it. Some people call it channeling. Some people call it speaking in tongues. Whatever you want to call it. See, it, it automatically happened. Notice how my eyes just close. I have no effort in just outpouring this information. So the reason I'm telling you this, sometimes I get so lost in it because I, quote, needed to be grounded unless I don't want to be grounded. A shot, a cigarette, Helps me stay in my body. <laughs> Whatever works, right? So y'all, yeah, I'm going to do one more refresh. Emily says, woohoo! That would be awesome. I'm a singer as well. Emily, send me some stuff. I would love to hear what you're doing, dear. Send me some of your music or whatever. You, what you call, uh, do you play guitar as well and all that? That'd be awesome. One final refresh, y'all. I love doing these live feeds. Love it. It feeds me. Well, you know that. I start closing my eyes and I get into that energy. I don't want to come back. But I have a 12-year-old kid. I'm not sticking out there that I want to leave this planet. I just love the space that you bless me and grace me with by being here and I couldn't do it without you I could sit and chat to a camera nobody's watching and it's not a showboating it's not a matter of showing off it's just through this excuse that we call a live feed that I get to connect that's why all of us are on social media even when we leave the social drama of life we go back into socializing on Facebook because we, we're socializing unifying junkies we love our cosmic brothers and sisters. <laughs> I love you. Peace, love, and light. March 11th. March 11th, 5 o'clock in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to be doing my first live public presentation on my new book that you helped me write, like I just said, by doing the first eight or ten of these live broadcasts, I realized I ch I channeled, wrote an entire book that I didn't have to sit down for years to do. First chapter's on anxiety. Second chapter's on meditation. Third chapter's on explosive clarity. In a matter of words, I can launch you into a state of explosive clarity that you will be so beyond noise. Awareness. The absolute power of infinite peripheral awareness. In this moment, can you be aware of hearing my voice? Can you be aware of the taste in your mouth? Can you be aware of the temperature on your skin? Can you be aware of whatever may be next to you? Take that all in at the same time. Become aware of all of that at the same time. Watch yourself go. You've just exploded into hyper-expanded, heightened awareness. You helped me write this book. <laughs> If you, can, if you live in Memphis, come see me at Unity Church, March 11th. Classical, world-renowned, award-winning pianist of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, Angelo Rapin, is going to create a soundscape behind my hour-and-a-half presentation to the public. Wow. <laughs> There's no rehearsal involved. He's going to sit at a grand piano in a Unity Church, and we're going to lock. And he's going to play off for me in my dialogue. It's going to be crazy beautiful. 
Joshua, hello. It's going to be crazy beautiful. Crazy beautiful. Crazy and beautiful. Do those two words go together? Oh, hell yeah. Sarah Buick said, It's time we release spirituality back into its crazy wild state. I like me some Sarah Buick. <laughs> Crazy is beautiful because what we call norm has not been working to our favor. I'm getting out of norm. In fact, I declared last night, norm is gone. I'm done with it. Done. I'm not running away from the world. I'm running into reality. I'm done. You're welcome, Sue. Hello, Lynette. Two more minutes. Anybody has anything you want to bring through? Something you want to share about your day? A question you want to pose? Maybe I could shed light on. Help support you in finding some clarity or a beautiful space of how you can meander through it and have the best possible result at the quickest interval. Please bring that through now. I'll just sit and zone out to this beautiful Hindi meditation music. Dear Lord, let this take you into the river of consciousness. Let this music I'm about to turn up consciously bring you into the life stream. When I say listen, I really mean listen. That space is real. It's more real than anything you can possibly imagine. Fran Rose says, better meeting for applying lessons discussions. Thank you, you're welcome. Donna says, mental illness is not an illness. What you are saying is a person with one foot in the material world and one foot in the spiritual world. People just don't understand. Oh my God, that is such an amazing point. Donna, if you are still here, I'm in a different room than you are. No, there you are. Donna, if you are still here, say, yes, Keith, I am. I am so happy you said that. I had planned to be here for 20, 30 minutes. It's probably been an hour. Emily says, I'm going through a tough time right now with Ascension. I'm going to say one thing that I'm coming away from after many years. Heavy drugs. It's not easy phase right now. Any guidance? It's a dangerous ground, but I'm going to do my best to be unoffensive and guiding versus more than being opinionated. One, I love you, Emily. I love you. Sounds strange. Don't take it out of the context that I mean it for your best possible answer from me. Love your drug addiction. Love it. I'm not saying love the fact that you're doing it. Let me rephrase that. Love who you are in your process because understand your drug addiction is no different than someone's food addiction. No different than someone's biting their fingernails addiction. No, no different than anyone doing their anything other addiction. See it as just a something that you are doing. In this moment for me, actually for you, I understand you use the word drug addiction to describe to me your quandary. I get it. Now let's get out of that. Let's get out of the fact that about a drug addiction. Okay, Keith, I'm there with you. It's not a drug addiction. See it as an aspect of yourself that is doing a certain something but wants to get better. Emily, did you take in what I just offered? Instead of seeing what you're doing as a drug addiction, that you're seeing yourself as doing something 
that you just want to move beyond? Do you see it from that perspective yet, darling? I see the hearts fly across the screen. I'm assuming that's her and saying yes. Notice when I offer to you in that way, that model, it changed it, didn't it? It didn't feel so heavy and so scratchy and so dirty. Right? Good girl. I'm proud of you. Very proud of you. It changed the whole dynamic. Because I know along with people who are conveying they have addictions or whatever life may be happening in, in their experience, there's such a heavy connotation by no matter what we call it. When we put that aside and no longer judge it as my drug addiction bad, terrorism in the world bad, it's just a something that's happening. It becomes, again, a conscious part of the unfoldment process. When you see as yourself as a person who is unfolding into your fullest potential, you will just see this drug addiction as an obstacle in your way versus something that you cannot conquer, something that you cannot climb the mountain of. It lessens your effort. It lessens the journey. It makes you want to say more yes than no. That's it, darling. It's not a fight. It's okay. There are many people who have dry, died of drug overdoses. It's okay. That was the path. They chose it. Things change. It all unfolded. It all unfolds. Don't beat yourself up about it because the drug addiction will continue and the beating yourself up about it because that's what got you or anyone likely in the drug, drug addiction scenario in the first place is all the kicking her own ass, kicking her own ass. So I don't want to feel this, what I'm doing that self-detriment. So now I'm going to self-medicate, self-medicate, self-medicate because I want to feel numb because the pain I'm carrying No matter who we are, whether we like it or not, the truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. The pain we are carrying is all self-induced. <sighs> Keith, you don't understand. That son of a bitch did this to me when I was a kid and did this to me last week. I do understand it. And this is a human dynamic that we're speaking of. I'm not trivializing anyone's life. Of abuse. That's not what this is about whatsoever. But as long as we stay in the human mentality, it doesn't change because as long as we don't deal with the emotional karma in return that I spoke about at the beginning of this broadcast, if you don't write yourself, get yourself together now, it's, the monster is going to get bigger. That emotional problem that we have created is just what we thought was happening. And what we thought was happening is going to continue to happen as long as we think what's happening is happening. Is it possible? If you want to see something beautiful and you want to shift, stop seeing it as right or wrong. No matter who you are in the future if you watch this broadcast. Again, I am not trivializing the things that happen to you in your life. But if you had enough of that, Seriously, had enough of it. The memories, the dreams, the nightmares, the residual haunting of the fact that you're carrying it around all these years. Because I love you. It will stop when you stop. There is no other way. No psychiatrist, no psychologist, Dr. Phil, me, or anyone else can ever change it until you stop it. Everything that was ever inflicted upon us emotionally, even as children, when we're in our innocence and vulnerable, it is self-created. Keith, this is nuts. I know, that's why it's the truth. Because the truth is not a tincture, band-aid, nor salve. The truth does not live in a box. The truth is wild. It's radical. It's free. And if we want to ride that train, we have to get out of what we think 
has happened, is happening, and or is going to happen. It's noise. So when we take full responsibility for the life that we came into, the family we were born into, into the city we were born into, and why these things happened to me, it doesn't condone other people's bad behavior. That's not what this is about at all. But if you want the cycle to stop, we have to own responsibility. 100% responsibility. Obviously, reap what you sow. Karma comes around, goes around. For every action, is an equal opposite reaction. But this happened to me at an early age. Trust me when I tell you, this is not your first time here. This is not your first rodeo, cowboy. Unresolved energy will always come back. As Spirit has told me in the Divine Principle, my reality is for those who really want it. So Emily, what I'm suggesting is stop seeing it as bad. See it for what it is, honestly, subjectively, objectively, sub subjectively, and objectively. Just see it. Look at it. Really look at it and see it for what it is. Hope that works for you. Stay in touch. Let me get back to Deborah. Deborah, if you, Donna, if you're still here, I am so sorry. I just went off on a on a rant. So Donna asked the question: Mental illness is is not an illness. What you are saying is a person with one foot in the material world and one foot in the spiritual world. People just don't understand. Donna, are you still here? Please say yes. I mean, I will still share this information anyway because it is valuable. I totally believe that people who are deemed schizophrenic are not. There you go again. The label, schizophrenic. Crazy people, bad people. They don't have it together. I don't buy into that whatsoever. But yet we sho sho drugs, shove drugs down their throat. I think if we had balance, let me rephrase that, practitioners who are balanced like a shaman, because you don't go hang out with a shaman and do it yourself, your intent opens you up, but the shaman is the one that spins the energy because you are not endowed enough to take care of yourself to, uh, to play in these arenas. Same, if we had balanced practitioners who can work with schizophrenia. I don't know this to be true. I'm not a doctor. I'm not claiming to be one. I can tell you as a spiritualist, I know how consciousness and energy works and awareness works. So as someone who's wanting to experience greater degrees of spirit, who goes to a shaman, who oversees the experience, if you had a balanced practitioner who worked with said schizophrenic people to help them to somewhat become planted in the body and on the earth but yet keep the door of their imagination and their consciousness to that which is possible because it's all possible people say well keep these people who are, or who are schizophrenic and crazy they see weird shit God created weird shit weird shit doesn't come from nothing God created everything so everything exists always has does not and will always exist crazy shit exists so again, maybe what we're calling crazy is not crazy at all. It's the medical field, those people who is classified what is right, wrong, good, bad, up, down, in, out. It's judgment. So we put these people in the home and we shove medicine down their throat and they become vegetables that drool at the mouth and they have no quality of life, even in their schizophrenia. It's horrible and it's poor. My honest, heartfelt, and I'm not going to say opinion, they're not crazy. They're tapped into something. And they just don't know how to ground it and to bring it into a usable way for us to understand the reality and the arena that they're playing in. That's my words about that, Donna. Thank you for a beautiful, delicious question. Maybe someone in the future will come across this broadcast and go, thank you for validating Donna for asking the question. So Keith would say, Everybody's bipolar. 
You might live blissful days. You get mad one day. You you swung. <laughs> Hello, Nathan. All right, y'all. Thank you. Again, I want to acknowledge everyone here. It only shows two people. Let me do a quick refresh. Donna says, can you rewrite the story, therefore releasing the bad memory, a type of alchemy? Well, of course, Donna. Absolutely, you can. Because as I expressed to Emily a minute ago, she had her story. She was in story. We all live in a story. We love story. We love a good juicy story, don't we? We watch TV. We love a good movie. That's a story. And we tell ourselves a story every day, whether we know we're telling us, us that story or not. There's a script being run, like a record, and it's caught in a groove. Not necessarily Emily, but anyone. But Emily did say she wants to release this place in her life. That was a story. And I gave her the pencil, a.k.a. the information, to close that chapter, tear the page out, and write a new one. She says, Keith, I understand. So her bad memory is the fact that she had a problem with drugs. And by the way, Emily, I want to say how much I love you and appreciate what you did because what you did deserves acknowledgement and recognition. You verbalize in a conscious, in a public forum, deliberately, Tomorrow, hundreds of people are going to see this. Something so sacred about your life. I, I have no doubt whatsoever. Spirit will say, you have just walked to the halfway point, dear one. Now I'm going to step in and involve myself. That is changing the story. <laughs> Emily said I knew someone who has tuned in and he ended up killing oh wow my bad I laughed but that was for Brian I knew someone who was tuned in and he ended up killing himself very sad if only he could have met a shaman right Brian Harden takes it to the light nature he says Brian I swear to you the guy that I want to turn you on to as far as the musician from Memphis, I tell you about, who's a prolific writer-singer. He and my other guitar player from many, many years ago have both told me one day, you remind me of a cartoon character. In fact, Rob told me this recently. I said, really? I wasn't offended. I delighted in it. Because he's, they're dead on. That's exactly what I am. I'm a nut. I'm a cartoon character. I'm so animated. I move. I cut up. I goof off. I don't care. It's like uh, I'm like what they used in Wormwood, whatever they called that back in the old Looney Tune, <laughs> Mary Melody days. I'm just one of those nutty, quirky characters. So Brian says, if you were a cartoon character, which one would you be and why? <laughs> That's actually kind of difficult. I would be Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn. I say, boy, feel my wing like I told you. <laughs> I'd be Foghorn. I was a Foghorn fanatic. I loved his wit. I loved the fact that he jacked with people a little bit. He got his ass kicked here and there. Always had tons of puns, which was tons of funs. Brian, what about you? Who would be your cartoon character and why? Who would you be? <laughs> Anyone in the room? Here's your turn. Own up. Who would you be? Emily says she'd be Taz. Uh, Taz. Uh, what is it? What is the name of the uh, Tasmanian Devil? <laughs> Brian says yes. Enlightenment for me comes when we take ourselves lightly. <laughs> Hence the reason to call enlightenment. Enlightened, lighten up. He's the light of the world. <laughs> Brian says he would be the Pink Panther. Chill. Da-dum-da-dum-dum-dum-da-dum-da-dum. 
Yeah, I like that little strut he's got, man. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, I think I'm going to wind down. Thank you very much for attending my speaking my heart, touching spirit. You helped me to create that space within myself. And for that, I will eternally love you. Things are unfolding. They are unfolding. Find yourself in the unfoldment process. So much so that the things are not unfolding. That is just simply you. I love you.